Well, hello there, and thank you for coming by my Ramsey channel. I'm glad that you did. And uh, it's the uh, first video of 2023 for me. And as you can see, I've been still in Middle Earth reading the uh, works of J.R.R. Tolkien in these beautiful editions from the Easton Press. Um, the first one let's talk about is J.R.R. Tolkien, A Biography. And this is the famous Humphrey Carter, uh, or Carpenter, biography. Uh, this was written not too long after uh, J.R.R. Tolkien passed away. I think this came out maybe in 78, 79, something like that. Uh, I guess I could not be lazy and, and look at the original publication date if I can find it. Uh, but I'm thinking that this came out not long after, yeah, 1977, actually. Uh, uh, so this was the uh, first published Tolkien biography, and uh, I think it's still probably regarded as uh, the best one. Um, I, had, I had not read it and actually knew really not a whole lot about uh, the life of Tolkien, um, but uh, I read this gorgeous edition published by Easton Press, uh, and uh, was absolutely enthralled with it. Um, it's everything that you want in a biography. It's not too little and it's not too much. Um, you know, it gives you everything that you want from a good biography. And I was surprised that uh, since this is sort of a, uh, I don't know if you'd call this an authorized biography, but it's certainly one that... Uh, the estate acknowledged and refers to, and it has a good reputation. I, I thought it might be a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say a kiss ass biography, but uh, I thought it might be a little bit less harsh. Now, it doesn't say anything, I don't think Tolkien was a bad man or anything whatsoever, but it, it doesn't shy away from marital difficulties and, and personal struggles and uh, some of Tolkien's um, less desirable characteristics, I guess you'd say. Not that there's anything salacious or grotesque or anything in this at all. It just wasn't. Uh, it it wasn't a fawning biography whatsoever. It it seemed quite honest. Um, and as you see, um, Easton Press has done a beautiful job with it. They always do. I really like the. Uh, the cover design on this one. It's very pretty. And if you're interested in the works of Tolkien and what kind of a uh, life someone who came up with uh, the things that he wrote, what kind of life they lived, uh, this is a really good one. Uh, so I enjoyed that very much. Um, here's one that came out a year or two ago. This is supposedly the last of uh, Tolkien's writings on Middle Earth. And um, it's called The Nature of Middle Earth. It might not be exactly what you're respecting. There's no narrative. There's no story. Uh, this is basically just Tolkien's private notes on uh, uh, things concerning Middle Earth. And um, How interesting it is is just going to depend on what kind of things you're interested in. The book spends an awfully lot of time on calculations and things of these sorts, trying to figure out uh, the the timelines of Middle Earth, the way aging works for for elves, um, just lots of lists of tables and figures that. You know, while they may be interesting, it's not exactly what you call compelling reading. Um, I think for for serious Tolkien scholars, this is probably a gold mine. For a general reader like me, who simply wants to read his stories and live in his worlds, uh, this this book has a lot of information that's of very limited interest. Um, that's not to say there's anything wrong with it. It's just not anything that, that turned me on too much. Um, 
and it, it came across as a little bit disjointed and strange to me, but I, I suppose it would when you're just making up a collection of, of notes and things that were jotted down at various times. Uh, although supposedly these are like the, the last things he was working on uh, to do with Middle Earth. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I've got it. I'm glad I read through it. Um, but it's not... It's not exactly a compelling read, but it is a nice thing and a very pretty thing, as you can see. As always, Easton Press does a bang-up job. Well, Toby, did you get down there? I know. Are you going upstairs to take a nap, or where are you going? We've lost Toby the cat. Um, anyway, that's the nature of Middle Earth. Um, and there you go. Then we have the complete guide. To Middle Earth, which is essentially just a uh, a Tolkien encyclopedia, and there's several Tolkien encyclopedias out there. This one is by Robert Foster, or is it Forrester? It's Foster. Um, and um, you know, if you're looking for a, a quick Tolkien reference book, there you go. This one uses a bit of a complicated identification system. I can't begin to remember all of the abbreviations. And look, look at the list of abbreviations that are in this book I, I, that I couldn't begin to, to recognize or remember all of them. But here are the abbreviations that you're going to need. Um, if, if you want to get everything out of this, look, look at this list. It continues over on this next page. So you'll see all of these little abbreviations in the uh, descriptions in the book. And sometimes you're sitting there thinking, okay, what was this one? You know, and it's a lot of back and forth flipping. Uh, it's presented in alphabetical order. And it's a, it's a, it is a, it is just a reference book. It's not something you sit down and, and read through. But, uh, you know. It's a, it's, it's a nice thing to have. Um, Tolkien scholar David Day has a Tolkien encyclopedia as well that I actually enjoyed quite a bit more than this one. Um, and this one has uh, some of the Greg and Tim Hildebrand art in it. Uh, you see that makes up the frontispiece there. Wish that was in color. Not sure why Easton Press didn't put that in color. Um, but anyway, that's the complete guide to Middle Earth, and then finally, we have what is, I think, a really pretty spectacular book. It's The Art of the Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, and um, Easton Press has really presented kind of the ultimate edition of this. Uh, this is readily available in a uh, hardcover edition from, I don't know if it's Hooten Mifflin or William Morris or... I don't, I don't remember who put, put this out originally, but uh, obviously this edition from um, Easton Press blows everything away. It's really heavy uh, and just really, look at how pretty that is. Isn't that something else? Um, let's see if I can show you a little bit of the insides of it. It's massive, it's heavy, and it's quite beautiful. Um, lots of this kind of business in it. Um, but it does have full-color reproductions of the color artworks and things in it. Um, lots and lots of maps. Some of the things that are included in here seem to me to be a little bit, little more than doodlings. Um, so is all of it necessary? I don't know, but, uh, it's a beautiful book. There's the famous, uh, portrait of Rivendell there. Really gorgeous and really beautifully produced. These are the best reproductions of the Tolkien art that, for the Lord of the Rings that I've seen anywhere. Uh, this is, this is well done. Uh, there's the Moria Gate. You know, it's 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 what you would expect. Unfortunately, he didn't seem to have done. There's part of the books of Mars Marzible, 
uh, he, he didn't seem to have done as much artwork for uh, the Lord of the Rings as he did for the Silmarillion or even for the Hobbit. Um, there's Lothlorien. But, um, you know, it's a really nice book. And I'm really glad to have it. And uh, that should give you some kind of an idea of what the book is like. So, there you go. That's everything I have for you on this video at this time from the Easton Press and the Tolkien Publications. Hope you enjoyed watching this. I'll see you on another video again real soon. Bye-bye.